Jesse and Ray. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the first episode of Frequency and Rain, where we cover conspiracy theories, government lies, cover-up, secrets, science, medicine, etc. I'm your host, Devlin Johnson. Got our first guest on here tonight. Go ahead and introduce yourself, brother. Hi, my name is uh, Connor Cloward. And uh, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way real quick. I would classify myself as a Christian of uh, from the religious viewpoint and... It's not defined as a modern day Christian would define that word. What would you classify yourself as, Connor? I would classify myself definitely as a uh, spiritual Christian, not necessarily religious Christian. Okay. The point of that is I think that during this podcast, you guys will come to understand that articulation is very important to us and the words that we say are also very important. Hence the name frequency and rain, words are frequencies. So let's get started. Our first topic today is going to be grounding and the importance of it for your health and how essentially it ties into almost every subject that we mentioned in the beginning because grounding can help you with your health. Grounding can help you with your consciousness. It can help you with your spirituality. It can help you with your thoughts. It can help you control your emotions. It can help give you energy whenever you're depleted. It can do a lot of good things for your health as well as just anything else that that comes your way we're all charged with energy and if you plug anything into a wall outlet safe to assume that it needs to be grounded or you're going to get shocked at some point in time our bodies operate quite the same way uh, anything like to add to that connor yeah well to me the first thing that comes to mind is like if you're uh the, the thing that you showed me the other i think it was a couple weeks ago with the mudras and the breathing mm-hmm. when you connect your circuits with your hands mm-hmm. and do a breathing te- technique it's a simple breathing technique yet you can get such a deep breath imagine doing that while grounded at the same time yes like completely bare feet it can be on cement it can be on uh, grass dirt whatever as long as you're connected to the earth uh, you can immediately feel uh, all of your blood starts flowing correctly mm-hmm. because for one, it's, uh, getting the correct charge on all of the iron that's in your blood, which helps your blood flow. That's why anemics have such a hard time with uh, correct blood flow. It's either bl- flowing too fast or it's flowing too slow and grounding essentially just helps your, uh, your blood flow and get that circuitry, uh, going in the right path. Again, it's like a, hitting the reset button on your uh, breaker or yeah. like an outlet. Mm-hmm. Like if you've got an extension cord or whatever. But um, I remember I was introduced to this uh, back in 2010 was when uh, my, he was essentially my stepdad at the time, Vern Bar- Baumgartner. Uh, he, he really enjoyed to uh, teach me about like electromagnetism and uh, frequencies, especially, as well as a, a bunch of other things. He's the reason why I got so interested in Nikola Tesla and did my, my research on that. And uh, one of the things that he did was he actually took copper wiring mm. and uh, did it in a Fib- Fibonacci sequence wrapped in uh, this, like, I don't know how he did this, but he made like sort of a crystal Mm -hmm. like shape vase with copper wiring all around it and he would ground himself onto that while laying like while i was laying on the dirt Mm -hmm. and i remember i I think this was the year that he lost uh, he lost a lot of weight Mm -hmm. just from that i mean his whole life being on the road he was in a cover band for a long time so his his health was definitely declining in his mid like fifties. But, uh, once he started doing grounding, he started also growing vegetables in his garden to help him like keep that grounding going. Um, a lot of the food that we needed for like produce was all grown in a garden. And then, uh, essentially, uh, from then he just, he kept on doing it every day. I could notice his mood changes as well. Like it's like taking the deepest breath that you could possibly take. And then a sigh of relief. Yeah. That's a very big sigh of relief. 
And uh, once he started doing it, he just couldn't stop. And even today, like as a trucker and stuff, he still does that. Yeah, I think that you touched on some really good points that I want to I want to go into more depth on. First off, being copper is this kind of falls into the government lies portion now, because if you Google copper, you're going to be told that it's a toxic metal. However, if you do a simple um, Google search as well on the five elements that your body is mainly comprised of, you'll find that the top two are carbon and copper. And we know from the Bible, we know from science, we know from a lot of religious standpoints, not just Christianity or the Bible, that all of our ancestors used to adorn themselves in copper because they, they claimed to help with autoimmune diseases. They claimed to help with circulation. They claimed that it would help with dis-ease um, or disease, if you will. Um, I think disease and the word dissonance are very similar and synonymous because I think dissonance is the main cause of dis-ease. Um, when you touch on frequencies, dissonant frequencies, when they clash, they don't sound good to the human ear. It ends up lending, leading to irritation, um, anger, depression, anxiety. And on that note, you also said the garden and he grew his own produce and made sure that it was all natural, which is to not be sprayed with pesticides and or other toxic metals that are located in pesticides, which you're going to consume and put into your body. And with that being said, it seems like this gentleman whom I've never met before and I'm just now hearing about decided to change his eating habits to be more clean and more healthy. He started grounding himself so that he could get a lot more just connection and feeling within himself and the earth so that he could have that sigh of relief. And as Connor mentioned, he says that he still does all of that to this day because he saw instant benefits. And that's the main focus that I want to focus on here is when we talk about health and medicine in this podcast, this isn't just gibberish. We don't want you guys to think this is hoo-ha or anything like that. We're testing this stuff now through our own personal lives and choices and how it's applicable to us. And it's working. We have our own research. I have my own data. I'm encouraging my friends to try out the same stuff and it's working. Case in point, uh, miracle number one, I joined the military when I was 17 years old and found out I was colorblind. Um, upon finding out I was colorblind, I was offered three job choices, that being a uh, radio operative, a cook, or a chaplain's assistant, to which I was finally able to find a new MOS with red green color discrimination. And I am now proud to say that I've taken multiple colorblind tests and I don't think I'm colorblind anymore. And these color tests would coordinate and correlate that exact same statement. So... When it comes to grounding and everything like that, your eating habits, I also was diagnosed with celiac disease last year and I had I didn't have a choice but to cut gluten out of my diet. I've lost a bunch of weight. I look to be to be quite frank a little a little uh scurvy, if you will. But my muscle mass has never been better. I don't work out and I have definition and tone in my body. I feel just as strong as I did before I lost weight. And the only differences that I've made are my eating habits, my perception, my thoughts, and I've started grounding. And I will say, <clears throat> I do remember, um, cause I've known Devlin for about a couple of years now. Um, he was definitely colorblind <laughs> for <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> I mean, without a doubt, you could point out anything that was purple, blue, or green, and he would not be able to tell you which was which. And depending on the shade of the background, it could be even worse than that. I mixed up browns and reds, pinks and reds, yellows and oranges, blues and purples, blues and turquoises, every color of the spectrum. Whereas, like, it, me, I have always had perfect color vision. So, I may be blind as, as hell when it comes to regular vision, but I am, I can see perfect color. So... When he's like pointing to me on, hey, what's what's this color? He knows that this is changing between the spectrum of the rainbow. We're looking at my laptop right now. But uh, yeah, no, he and he showed me that uh, we were actually at a D&D &D, um, store locally. And uh, he just points to these dice that he had grabbed. And he's like, what's this color? I think that it's this. And he was spot on. I believe the one that he showed me was like a, a faded purple. And he could even tell that it was faded purple. Yeah, it gets so, black colored specks as well, which was normally very hard to differentiate. Yeah, <laughs> which, I mean, if you've ever taken any colorblind test, you would know that that's the thing that you would actually test for is uh, to go off of uh, off colored speckles. Yep, and contrasted backgrounds. And he, he could tell me perfectly. He even pointed out orange dice, which I know beforehand... <laughs> He would always have a problem with because it would look pink or like red, red, 
colors of green, yellow. So for sure, there has been a definite physiological change with him. And just and the only thing that he's been doing different, like he said, has been his eating habits, his uh, perception of the world, and also the perception of his own thoughts, whether his thoughts are his own. And yeah. I have muscle definition. Don't worry. Videos are coming, guys. Y'all will be able to see my epic six-pack abs sooner or later. But, yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, even, I mean, even when he first told me about his vision, he was tearing up. And I was even tearing up afterwards. I was like, no I'm way, tear up dude. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, I, I was like, there's no way. Like, how? no one in the history of ever has ever been like, oh, yeah, I'm cured of blind." It, cured of color blindness yeah and because that is such a like minor thing that most people wouldn't even focus on yet it, 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 that was common day birth. life for me yeah. yeah and that being said too i just want to state that when it comes to like color blindness and stuff like that it's it's more prevalent in men but women are prone and subject to it too and i don't claim to be cured i just claim to be able to notice a very drastic considerable difference because i'm not a doctor i'm not a licensed physician i haven't seen one nor talked to one about it so i don't want anyone to think i'm just blowing smoke out of my ass but this these are real changes that are happening and the reason that i haven't gone to a doctor is because i think that western medicine is nothing but a government conspiracy and a lie in order to trick you into buying pharmaceuticals from big pharma if if we break all of this down the reason i decided to call this podcast frequency and rain is because to to me and my understanding of the universe, the world, and everything and how it works, you break everything down to a molecular level. You you break the body down, you get to the DNA. You break the DNA down, you get to the atom. You get you break the atom down. You or excuse me, you break the DNA down, you get to cells. You break the cells down, you get to atoms. And we know through science, atoms are nothing but ninety nine point nine 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 repeating empty space. And with all of that being said, you can't see frequencies there. They don't inhabit a. Uh, they don't inhabit a field or anything like that. They're an invisible force that our entire universe is governed and made up of. So if frequencies are what everything's made out of, it's safe to say that frequency probably causes disease and it's probably what cures it. And that being said, if we're made of frequencies, your body is a powerhouse, okay? Your brain is one of the most capable things in existence. It can regulate your temperature and it knows exactly what temperature you need to be at all times. And if it changes tiny tiny degrees of degrees microscopic amounts your brain will kick into action it will tell your body what to do if it overcompensates for a hormone it will turn that hormone down if it undercompensates it will turn the hormone up in the blink of an eye it's what it's meant to do and so whenever you put on shoes that have synthetic rubbers in them and you put on socks that have polyester and are 100 percent pure cotton and natural you are creating your own dissonance due to in my opinion brainwashing because the frequencies for all the music and everything you listen to are also changed from 432 hertz, a natural resonant frequency, to 440, which is the only frequency that you get 741 hertz on on the F over C4, or any of the Fs. I think it's F sharp, actually. It, the 741 is the frequency of the devil. It causes dissonance. It's That's like its only purpose is to cause dissonance and clash with every other note that it hits in 440 hertz. And that's what everything you listen to is on. You know what's also interesting too is uh, going back to like the frequencies when uh, in reference to Vern was. I remember uh, this was around the same time that they just barely discovered that gravity was a wave. Yeah, was exactly. A, was a wave force. It's a yeah. wavelength. And now we know that particles, depending on whether there is a consciousness observing them. Particles can act like waves too. Particles act like particles until you add an observer and or a conscious, if you will. And once these particles realize they're being observed, they act differently to insinuate they also have a conscious. They can, your bed sheets, your books, your guitars, your book bags, your the water you drink, the food you eat is all comprised of the exact same atoms and cells that you are. And you are conscious and all of those cells down to a molecular level and those atoms are conscious as well. Well, and also, I mean, for sure. And uh, another good thing to know, I mean, so the the way that I think about it, especially with grounding, is uh, when you're trying to reset, because really what you want to do is reset the, the frequency that your brain is attuned to. And it, so going back to gravity, 
it's for one the earth will always emit gravity because it has a center of mass that's large enough to pull us close to it gravity was also the first acting force after the big bang that came into existence and then you've got it an electromagnetic field that also allows that frequency to concentrate in one area and so rotate. when you when you are grounding yourself to the earth that's when you are uh, immediately hitting that reset button not only on your blood flow and anything physiologically but you're also resetting your mindset back to a frequency that is more in tune with the earth and i've i've noticed before even just and uh think about campfire settings like when you're mm -hmm. just out and about with your buddies around a campfire and if you do have the option i would definitely recommend going bare feet because immediately when you do that you'll notice that everyone will start being on the same uh, we'll call it brain wavelength because when you start thinking of the same things at the same time it's because you're in tune with each other you're mm -hmm. actually listening not only with your conscious brain mm -hmm. but with your subconscious uh tools that you already have you you can feel the the pulses Mm -hmm. So let's break that down a little bit. Whenever we talk about grounding, the science behind it is is that our bodies are negatively charged with electrons. So if you get overstimulated due to all of this dissonance that you're listening to and you're not connected to the earth because you're adorned in clothing that has synthetic fabrics and plastics woven into it and synthetic rubber so that you can't get a good connection to the earth, how are you supposed to discharge all of that built up overstimulating negative energy? Because you can only, your body can only take so much. You can only get so stimulated before you have to retreat or withdraw. And if you will just take your shoes off and go outside immediately, it takes six seconds, we're discovering, of just standing outside with your bare feet in grass, dirt, etc. And you will feel it instantaneously. Imagine if you if you took your, your shorts off or something like that and went and sat on a beach in the sand with water, with nature. Every, every single religious or spiritual belief out there has something about getting back in touch with nature written into it every single thing out there says to not put your faith and put your belief systems and to worship and praise material things but to look within and find all of this stuff within you because we are eternal energy can neither be created nor destroyed only transferred when your flesh body your ash to ash dust to dust your physical body dies you still have a conscious mind that is outside of that flesh Imagine yourself and all of the thoughts that you have and your emotions that govern you as a separate entity, much like a, a spirit, if you will, observing the flesh because your flesh has a mind of its own. People all, all around the world listening to this can probably relate that you may have had an addiction or something that was hard to control in the past. And even though your brain, your mind, your consciousness said, this is not good for me, I think I shouldn't do it. Your flesh said, heck no, let's indulge. It feels good. I want it now. And that's exactly how addiction works. And let's touch on that again real quick, because if you ask an addict, if they're an addict still, they have one of two options. That's to, well, one of three options. One of them is to lie to you out of guilt or shame, which is fair, no judgment. The other one is to admit that they are an addict who is still currently using. And according to every single thing or every experience I've had with an addict, their only other option is to admit that they are an addict in recovery now. And they will always be an addict. However, being an addict in recovery, they are choosing to not let that addiction take hold of them. And do you realize what sort of cap you're putting on your own limits? You're letting somebody else govern you by telling you that you will always be an addict and that you're just in recovery and every day you need to focus on your recovery. You know what? What if you just woke up and told yourself, I don't want to be an addict at all anymore. I'm done with this. And that's going to be hard, obviously. The hardest thing to do is to do the thing that you want to do the least. Which also, by the way, they're finding out that people who do things they don't want to do because it's the hardest decision and usually the best, they're finding out that it grows a certain part of your brain to make you more adept. If you look at all the best athletes, some of the biggest movie stars, singers, etc., they all have this strange phenomenon happening within a certain part of their brain and we're studying it now. And we're realizing that just the way that you think and thinking more of love and your family and sitting around with your friends at a campfire barefoot, preferably, you're creating bonds with other spiritual consciousnesses and energies that are around you. And when you are all on the same wavelength and your brains are operating on the same wavelength, which by the way, your brain operates on four different wavelengths, alpha, beta, theta, and delta. That's real. Your thoughts become things as soon as you think them. You just can't see it. When you all operate on the same wavelength, you resonate much like good sounding chords in a harmonic. 
and they sound great. The frequencies of the universe are all played on a scale. It's music. Why do you think the Roman Catholic Church are the ones who instigated the change from 432 hertz to 440? They already knew what it was going to do, and that's a church. So the main, we're getting a little bit um, far into the recording now. We're at about 20 minutes, so I just want to close this with the reason we're making this so important is that every single person on this planet has been lied to, and it's going to take a lot of effort and open-mindedness and just effort and open-mindedness in order to help every single person out there with all of the anxiety, the mental illnesses, the physical things that are ailing them, the, the, the bad thoughts they have, getting angry with your family and having fights at all of your guys' holiday get-togethers, that can all stop. And it is quite literally as simple as just starting with changing your thoughts and getting back in touch with you. You are a spiritual being who has existed for thousands of years and your your higher consciousness, your higher self is one being and that's you. And if you wear clothes that you don't like because of the newest trends or you wear or you spend all your money on shoes instead of paying your bills, that's because of the dissonance. And if you want to change, all you have to do is tune in every single Thursday at 5 p.m. and we got you. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so with that, we'll close off with a couple more interesting topics that um, we've just come to research of our own findings after we've taken these separate spiritual journeys and we've started intermingling. A lot of the people that I'm going to have on this podcast starting off are just friends and family and all of them had their own similar and dissimilar belief systems. Everyone came from all paths and walks of life prior to my own spiritual discovery and practice. And now just through intermingling with all of my friends, and sharing some of the experiences and the research and the data that I've collected and watching them apply it and seeing their feedback. Like, do you know how great a feeling it is to go talk to your friends and when they actually love and respect you, they listen to you and not just listen to you to say like, I'm being nice, but I really don't care what this person has to say. I mean, genuine authenticity, which by the way, there's a difference. You'll come to find that they will actually practice and listen to what you're saying. And when it works for them, they're going to have the exact same reactions that I think Connor's had, which is why he's here on this podcast talking to y'all as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it immediately when you had showed me even just the breathing technique, which I, I, I had seen it quick. in other places, but, but never really. Before that and before meeting me or anything, would you say that it's fair to assume that you were very skeptical of talk like this and maybe have labeled it not as mumbo jumbo, but as something that you hadn't seen direct results from yet, or you hadn't seen as profound results of with someone else until you interacted with me. Not, not profound results, but definitely wouldn't have seen it as mumbo jumbo. That's for sure. sure. Well, I just wanted to point I'm, that out because I'm lot also definitely do. a lot more open minded than sure. most people. Sure. sure. And that being said, this guest is very resonant with me and he was prior to my own spiritual journey and whatnot. So it's safe to say that he was going to say that anyways, he's a very good friend, but the point I'm making with that is I, I hope that all of you, if you say this to yourselves and you could see yourself practicing this and telling it to your friends and you think your friends would think that you're crazy or they wouldn't listen, my advice to you is either try to change their minds and get them to see your view, be more articulate, be more specific. If you don't understand something, don't pretend to know it. Ask questions. Genuinely, authentically learn. If you don't care about it, then let that person know you don't care about what they're saying and you'd like to switch the topic to something more resonant with you. And if not, leave. You know what you want. You've been searching for it for a long time. That's why we're here to learn and to expand and ascend. And if you're stuck in any sort of rut, it's because you're not learning the lesson the universe is trying to teach you. Yeah, for sure. With that being said, let's get into the fun stuff, the stuff we really want to talk about, which is our own personal crazy experiences and our own crazy paths that have led us down many a rabbit holes into all of this profound knowledge that we have, case in point. I don't know if any of you guys have seen any of the TikTok videos or any of the, the stuff running around social media right now of people who are, excuse me, scientists who are taping words that resonate with um, good feelings like love, happiness, family, bonding, etc. And they're taping these words to Petri dishes, filling them with salt and water. They're letting them sit so the water evaporates. And then they take another uh, group of Petri dishes and they label them with words that resonate with things like hate, depression, anxiety. And when you let the water evaporate out of these Petri dishes individually, you'll come to find that all of the dishes that just had words of love and, and happiness taped to them make beautiful pictures under microscopes. And every single one of the, the Petri dishes that had something negative attached to them make complete trash and they just look like utter blobs. And you're more than welcome to try this experiment at home with yourself. You literally just need some water, um, preferably not tap, get some nice distilled or purified water. 
and just put some salt in it and let it sit there until it evaporates. I promise you will not be disappointed with your results. Yeah, all you got to do is speak to it too. Yeah, speaking to water. That's a good one. Why don't you go ahead and uh, share a little bit with what you know about oh, yeah. that? Um, especially, uh, they did a test, I think it was mid-2000s. They've been doing tests on water mm -hmm. on the effects that, uh, even just your words as you're, you can just talk to water or your intent or your thoughts while you think about what you're going to say. Yeah. To it. But if you genuinely look at a glass of water and say, I hate you, they have found that the, the nutritional value of it goes down I bet the pH and then, goes up and it becomes more acidic. Yeah, well, it becomes, it, it, it goes either way. It doesn't, it, it's kind of varies. varies. Yeah. It, yep. it varies d depending on what minerals are in it. Mm -hmm. But when you, then on the opposite spectrum, when you look at a glass of water and you say, I love you genuinely in your heart, you're meaning it because you love water. You thrive on you water. You survive water. water. So when you say that and then drink it, it actually purifies the water. It's almost like it's exactly like what you would call a blessing mm -hmm. on water. <clears throat> And love um, it, is a blessing. it increases the nutritional value of it. And these are things that they have done variable studies on, which the only variable that is being introduced to this water is literally the frequencies that are entering Your the water's yep. pathway. And uh, that's a profound, again, another profound thing about frequencies is they can literally make or break how water affects us. So yeah, you may get eight glasses of water a day, but what if every single time you say a hateful wor word about someone or that's in that, hateful thoughts even. It, even then, the toxicity of your mindset mm -hmm. will then become the toxicity of what you ingest. Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe that when people truly have a genuine mindset and are uh, very loving in a genuine way, mm -hmm. It physically alters us. And this is something that I have seen personally uh, it, within myself and within other people's. Mm -hmm. Just plain and simple, I've seen a lot of very terrible people turn it around and become very great people in my life. And then I've seen the opposite, where they might have been a pretty decent guy or girl, and they turn into one of the most hateful people that I know. And that is something that we can always change. No matter where you're at in life, mm -hmm. you can always change toward, towards a positive outlook. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter your perspective in the moment as long as you can change your perspective to looking towards the future. Yeah, and I think the, a little bit, maybe not a better way, but a different way that may resonate with some people who didn't understand that is it think before you speak that's a, a parable if you will um that's been passed down through the generations and i think that if you break that down that just means that even if you say something if it's not authentic okay the universe knows and i think that that kind of leads into even if you're a complete jerk and you you're just a, a depressing just irritable person to be around if you rock that and you know you're depressing and irritable I personally think that you'd be better off than the person who smiles all the time, but is crying inside because they're not being true to themselves. And that alone will create an inner dissonance that will wreak havoc on you like it did to me for 30 years. And if you heard an influx in my voice, it's because these are real tears about to come out because the changes that you guys will see, if you, if everyone's got a past, I'm not trying to compare hurt or pain, but I know my pain and I know it very well. And it hurts a lot. And that hurts going away. And I can cry right now with a smile on my face knowing that it's only going to get better. And so with that, I just want all of you guys to know that even if you are a jerk or you're struggling with your own perception of the world and whatnot, it quite literally is as simple. And we're not invalidating any mental illness. These things are real. It's caused by dissonance. They are very real. But you can change. The only thing that you are in control of is yourself and your perception. And if you want to start getting a better outlook on life and you want to improve your own predicament, you need to change your perception and the way you think first. Then the words you speak, keep grounding and it'll come. Could have said it better. Heck yeah. Well, we're about to hit the 30-minute mark, y'all. This is the first episode of Frequency and Rain. I'd like y'all to give a big round of applause to my, my first guest, Connor Cloward. He took a big step coming out here. Uh, we all know what stage fright is.
and uh, especially us men out there. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, tune in next week, you guys. Next episode's dropping again uh, Thursday at 5 p.m. Hope to see you there. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Frequency and rain. <laughs> <laughs>